Welcome back. It is physics again. Yes. You love physics, I love physics, we all love physics. So what are we doing now? We are now onto the part of the unit where we talk about um, density and pressure. Density and pressure. So first of all, density. Density. What does it mean? Some days you feel a bit dense. That's got absolutely nothing to do with the technical definition for density. Density is the symbol, this funny little symbol here. Density is just the mass divided by the volume. So as a formula, we say density equals mass divided by volume. Pretty simple, really. Mass per unit volume. It's the proper technical definition, mass per unit volume. So the units would be kilograms per cubic meter, or often cubic, um, often grams per cubic centimeter. So we'd write it as the, we'd write the units kilograms meters minus three, or grams centimeters minus three. Okay, that's density done, sorted, fantastic. Let's talk about pressure. What's pressure? Pressure Pressure is the, the force applied per unit area. That's the definition of pressure. The force applied per unit area. So we say pressure, lowercase p, equals force per unit area. So what does that really look like in, in real life? Well, hang on. To start with, let's say what are the units going to be? Units will be newtons per square meter. So we'd write we'd write it as newtons meters to minus two. Newtons per square meter. So what does what does pressure look like in real life? Well if you stand on the floor like this with one foot, it feels kind of normal. That's what people do. It's called walking. You put your foot on the floor and you, you feel it but it feels fine. You put your foot on a small stone and you go ouch because it hurts. There's more pressure. Why is there more pressure? There's the same amount of force. There's the force of your weight down on the stone. But the stone has a much smaller area. It might have an area of a few square millimetres. And it hurts because that force is all concentrated into a small area. Now forget the stone. Instead you stand on an upturned nail like I did once. And the area is now perhaps half a square millimetre. And all of that force of your weight is on that tiny little area. And what happens? Well, the nail slides right through your foot and you end up in A&E. Now, that's an effect of pressure. That's pressure. Pressure matters. Pressure affects your life. Don't forget about pressure. Okay, so what can we actually say about pressure? Well, pressure in normal situations is just force per unit area, like standing on nails and that kind of thing. That's quite easy to understand. What about pressure in fluids? What about when you go diving down beneath the waves at the beach? The, the deeper you go, the more your ears hurt. Why do your ears hurt? Because the pressure is increasing. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure until you get to a point where your ears might burst. But before that, you would have run out of air and you would have gone to the surface anyway. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you go diving with a, with a tank, which I've never done, you, um, you have big problems with pressure because the pressure increases and it causes all sorts of issues. So we need to understand pressure because this, again, as I said, can affect your life. So, pressure. As we increase in depth, the pressure goes up. So if this little measuring cylinder was a giant measuring cylinder and this was 50 meters and you were a tiny little guy and you were diving in and you were trying to go down, 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 down. The deeper you go, the, the greater the pressure would be. So why is that? Well, think about it. If you were at this depth, what's on top of you? If the water was up to this level here, then you're a little diver swimming around at this point. All of the weight of all that water there is on top of you. So that applies pressure. And the area could be considered to be this area here of this measuring cylinder. So just keep that in mind. Imagine the giant measuring cylinder. So there is an equation for pressure at a certain depth and it's this. Pressure equals density of the fluid, often water but it can be another fluid. Pressure equals density times G, gravity, 9.81 times delta H. Now delta H, I know H is for height 
but we're thinking about height in a negative sense, it's depth and it's below the surface. So pressure equals density of the fluid times gravity times the change in depth from the surface level down to whatever depth you're at. So how do we get to this equation? Because you need to know this, you need to know how to derive it. Well first of all we know pressure equals force divided by area. Easy stuff, you learnt that all of three minutes ago, so that's easy. Secondly, we know that force is equal to mass times gravity. So if you substitute, pressure simply equals mass times gravity per unit area. Okay, it's not too bad so far, is it? Now here's where it gets a wee bit tricky. We think about our, our little measuring cylinder. There's a certain volume of fluid above you. You're the diver here swimming around in your giant measuring cylinder and here is this volume of water above you. Now the volume of water actually equals the area multiplied by the height. That's what volume equals, area times height. So if you just turn that around, area equals volume divided by the change in height or, or change in depth. So if you put that in where you see area, you suddenly end up with, instead of pressure equals mass times gravity divided by area, you put this in instead, you get pressure equals mass times gravity times change in height divided by volume. That all does make good sense. There's one more thing we can do. Step four, we can say, okay, instead of using mass divided by volume, what was the first thing we learned at the beginning of this little video? It was density. Density equals mass per unit volume. So where you see mass divided by volume, you can put in density instead. And that will improve your life. So we have pressure equals density times gravity times height. You now have a formula for pressure in a fluid. Now, one last little point. Just remember that this is change in pressure. The pressure at the surface of a liquid is not actually zero because there's air pressure pushing down on it. So that's why we often use a little triangle. We say, we drop our stuff on the floor, we scratch our ear, but then we say the change in pressure equals density times gravity times height. And that's just worth knowing. Okay, that'll do us. Good stuff. Thank you.